Hello, everyone. Thank you for participating in the third international conference on biological engineering and medical science. My name is Ömer Burak Istanbullu, and I am an assistant professor at the Department of Biomedical Engineering of Eskişehir Osman Gazi University in Turkey. This presentation is going to be about the corrosion issues encountered in implantable biomaterials and solution approach. The outline of this presentation is given here. At first, a brief introduction about implantable biomaterials and their characteristics will be given. Afterwards, the corrosion mechanism of biomaterials which are placed in the human body will be detailed. With the given case reports regarding the corrosion issues and simulation studies of these cases, the approach to reduce biomaterial corrosion will be discussed. Following the experimental corrosion analysis and corrosion reduction methods here, the main conclusion of this presentation will be given in the final section. First of all, what we call and define biomaterials is any synthetic or natural biomaterials which are non malleable and have biocompatible features are the biomaterials. Biomaterials are intended to interact with biological systems, in other words, tissues or organs such as vessels, bones, or blood, etc. They also aim to support or replace a damaged or diseased tissue or organ. The biomaterials can be classified in four main groups depending on the material selection in their production and functionality. They are metals and alloys, ceramics, polymers, and composites. The mostly used materials for each group are listed as shown in this table given here. The biomaterials can be utilized or to support almost all parts of the human body. For instance, implantable pulse generators or cerebral vessels in brain surgery, intravascular stents for vas vascular surgery, knee joint replacements in orthopedics, then contact lenses or intraocular lenses in ophthalmology, dental implants, or pacemakers as a cardiovascular device. Here, the main point is any biomaterial can be placed and implanted in human body. Therefore, they are in contact with the tissue or organ regardless of the region used in. There are some expectations from the biomaterials depending on their functionality. Therefore, physical and chemical features are required for a proper biomaterial. In addition to being strong enough regarding mechanical properties for load-bearing applications, such as knee joint replacements, flexibility for cardiovascular stents and hardness features for dental applications are also the main physical characteristics that are expected from a biomaterial. These features may vary on body region where the implant is aimed to be used. Thus, the material selection in the biomaterial production also differs. However, regardless of the biomaterial design, there are common chemical requirements from all the biomaterials. First of all, they must be chemically passive and not to react with the body resulting in toxic effects. Therefore, they also must have non-toxic features. To achieve this, the corrosion resistance is also expected from the biomaterials. This is very essential since in case the biomaterial corrodes in a human body, it can lead to toxic effects even though the whole structure is non-toxic. This is due to the releasing materials based on the corrosion mechanism are very small particles that can transport via vessels into any tissues nearby the implant or far away the implant. This situation may lead to toxic effects in any organ in the body as shown in the schematic diagram here. The biomaterial corrosion process starts when placed in the human body. This is a challenging issue, especially for metallic biomaterials due to they contain free electrons at the outer shells of their atoms. The fundamental components in an electrochemical corrosion cell are positively charged anodic site, negatively charged cathodic site, electron path, which is the metallic connection here, and ionic path, which is the electrolyte where metal ions can pass through. 
all four components must be present for corrosion induction. Because of the ionic contents, proper temperature and being dynamic, human body is a very convenient environment for corrosion of the biomaterials. Biomaterial corrosion lead to material deterioration and decreased release, which is very small particles releasing from the metallic or uh, ceramic or polymeric material. In other words, uh, this material can pass through the body. And this may lead to biocompatibility issues such as inflammatory response, toxic effects of mechanical failure or the, of the biomaterial. One of the most common biomaterial corrosion mechanism in human body is the galvanic corrosion. Galvanic corrosion occurs when two dissimilar materials are in contact with each other. In this case, while one of the materials acting like an anode, the other presents a cathodic feature. This may lead to material and dev device failure due to the corrosion as shown in this picture. Using electrochemically similar materials or applying surface coating can inhibit or completely block this corrosion process. One other, one another common corrosion issue for biomaterials is the stress corrosion. This occurs when an implant is exposed to a tensile or compression stress, such as the body weight here. This may also increase the corrosion risk and this also lead to device and material failure as shown in the correct home plate picture given here. Here, increasing the fatigue strength of the material or making a design modification that can reduce the stress distribution on this material surface also can uh, reduce or completely block the stress corrosion issues. One another corrosion issue is crevice corrosion. Here, if in case any implants having a small gaps or crevices, moisture and other contaminants accumulate in these gaps and crevice regions. This may lead to localized corrosion, and finally, the material can break down because of this corrosion issue. Altering material design here and use, using the corrosion resistant materials in the material production can also inhibit the crevice corrosion. The last corrosion problem uh, that we face for biomaterials is wear, wear and fretting corrosion. This occurs when three implant surfaces rub against each other. Material loss and corrosion occurs in this situation, which can also lead to, of course, device failure. Using materials with low friction coefficients and applying coating for both of the material surfaces can reduce such risks. Here, a case report regarding a biomaterial corrosion is given. A 79-year-old woman carrying a surgical plate screw system went to a hospital with a complaint of femoral pain. It was reported by radiographic analysis that the pain was because of the corrosion-based debris around the screws as shown here. In our laboratory, this scenario was modeled in finite element-based software to figure out how corrosion mechanism develops for a plate screw system in implanted the human body. First, plate screw system on a correct bone under the muscle this was designed as shown here. The electrochemical analysis was performed for a galvanic corrosion situation in a cross-sectional plane. Here, you see the anodic and cathodic regions in the designed model. The opposite scenario, of course, can also be simulated to get the results. The arrows and colors here shows how much electrical current occurs when a galvanic couple is given here, placed in a human body.
This simulation was computed by different plates, groups, conditions to figure out how this similarity influences on the corrosive behavior of the biomaterials. Here, different colors correspond to different materials used in orthopedics, such as titanium alloy, magnesium alloy, which is AZ91, 316L stainless steel materials. The results indicate that this similar material selection increased the material loss due to the corrosion. On the other hand, when the same materials are used in both plate and screw, the corrosion ratio dramatically reduced. However, there are still small amounts of corrosion occurrence depending on corrosion resistance, even though the same materials are used. It is since the biomaterial used in the plate and screw production includes free electrons. One another case report as an example is a 74-year-old man who was diagnosed with 30% occlusion at his carotid artery. His occlusion was treated by intravascular stent placement at first. However, after 10 months, stent restenosis occurred, which means reocclusion of the stent place region due to the cellular accum accumulation on the stent surface. Therefore, a secondary surgical operation was applied and a one another stand was placed to treat the secondary occlusion. In this situation, galvanic corrosion risk increased for this patient since two different types of stands in contact and they were placed in the same electrolytic region as shown here. The pictures given here show the galvanic corrosion on the stand surface and material loss on the stand surface. Since there are two different types of material in utilized stands here, while one of the stands is acting like a cathode, the other stand is acting like an anode. So this situation increases the galvanic corrosion risk and material failure is shown and can be clearly seen here. Here, you see a model metallic stand in an occluded blood vessel to be simulated in terms of corrosion development in a dynamic blood flow conditions. Two models have been designed and computed in our laboratory. While one of the models is a bare stand, the other model was created by applying a thin film coating on the stand surface as shown here. Here, by a compatible diamond-like carbon structure was selected as the coating material. Because DLC structure, in other words, diamond-like carbon structure, can passivate the, against the corrosion. Both models are given in these pictures. Here, the arrows and color distribution indicates the electrical current densities during the blood flow in the standard vessel for both models. You can see electrical current density was inhibited thanks to the surface persuasion effect of DLC coating. The simulation results indicate that while co the corrosion-based material loss increased at the end of the one-year period, as seen here, the model with thin film coating dramatically reduced the material loss due to the corrosion, as seen in the pictures given here and GIF videos given in the below. In order to analyze the corrosion process for biomaterials experimentally in our laboratory, control and test group intravascular stent specimens were obtained and produced as shown here. While the control group specimens include the bay form of the stent materials, the control group specimens were produced by applying single walled carbon nanotube thin film stru structures on their surfaces. To analyze the corrosion of bay and coated specimens, a corrosion cell was prepared and potential stent system was set up. Simulated body fluid solution, which imitates the ionic content of human blood plasma, was prepared and filled in the corrosion cell. Silver and silver chloride was used as the reference electrode. Platinum was used as counter electrode. 
Control and test group specimens were used as working electrode in the corrosion cell. The corrosion cell temperature was set up at 37 Celsius degree using a water bath. The prepared corrosion cell was connected to a potential stat system and computer. Then the open circuit equilibrium potential was achieved prior to the experimental tasks. At first, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy analysis at different perturbation frequencies applied with 10 repeats. Both and Nyquist plots were obtained from the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy analysis. Thus, electrochemical impedances for the corrosion cell coated and bare specimens were obtained. Afterwards, Tafel analysis in direct current conditions were performed between minus 1.5 volts to 0.5 volts. Here, the electrical current densities for the specimens having different surface features were obtained. Using the equations which are described in related ASTM standard methods, Corrosion ratio and mass loss rate per year were calculated using these equations. And these equations are the equations that were described in this ASTM G102 standard. Here, while the plots with small squares correspond to waveforms, the small triangles correspond to coated forms of the specimens. So the squares are the beige specimens and triangles are the coated specimens. As seen from the board plot for each material, the 316 L stainless steel, cobalt chromium alloy, titanium alloy, and 316 LVM stainless steel material. As seen from these plots, by the surface coating and persuasion against corrosion, a dramatic increase in logarithmic scale was observed in the electrochemical impedance feature depending on the applied perturbation frequency for each material type. Here in the given Tafel analysis results, the continuous plotting correspond to coated form of each specimen. You can see how much the electrochemical corrosion density reduced thanks to the surface coating and persuasion effect of coating structure. On the other hand, these images show the clean surfaces of both bare and coated specimen before the corrosion analysis. However, after the electrochemical corrosion analysis, while the bare material surface deteriorated, there was no such deterioration for the specimens coated with the carbon nanotube structures. To sum up, the corrosion is a significant challenge in implantable biomaterials, and this may lead to device and material failure and other health complications such as biocompatibility issues. The, the solution to corrosion-based is, based issues involve the material selection here, we can select the materials electrochemically similar, or we can apply thin film coating on the material surface to persuade the material against the corrosion. We can make some surface modification. We, we can apply surface modification effects such as micro or nano pattern surface topology. One another thing we can do to reduce the corrosion issues is geometric modification in the biomaterial design. I would like to thank you for listening and watching this presentation and please do not hesitate to contact with me for further information about this topic.